In this video, we're going to be discussing empirical formulas. And so, first thing we're going to do is we are going to define an empirical formula. So, an empirical formula of a compound is the simplest whole number mole ratio of ions in a formula unit or atoms. And so, when we talk about an empirical formula, what I want you to remember is that it is the simplest whole number mole ratio. And so, what we need to understand here is that we're dealing with whole numbers. The empirical formulas are just a simplification. So just keeping a simple uh, outlook on this. And so we have a compound called uh, benzene. And benzene has a formula of C6H6. Now benzene uh, can be reduced to an empirical formula of CH. So when we look at these two formulas, one's molecular formula. The molecular formula is the actual formula for that compound, but the empirical formula is the simplified version of it. So it's the simplest whole number mole ratio. Another example would be octane, which has CH18, and that can be reduced to C4H9. So we can calculate the empirical formula using composition data. Now, there's two different ways. You can use data that's collected from an experiment, or you can use percent composition. And so, now, in this particular example, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the empirical formula for radium and oxygen. So, we're going to fill in those question marks. So, to do this, we need some basic information. We have a 1.640 gram sample of radium was heated to produce 1.755 grams of radium oxide. What is the empirical formula? Now, first thing we need to do is you need to figure out the mass of radium. And then you need to figure out the mass of oxygen. Now, the mass of radium is easy. It's, it's 1.640 grams. The mass of oxygen is where you're going to take the the mass after the reaction and you're going to subtract it from the initial mass of that process so doing so what you will end up getting is 0 0.115 Now we have both grams of radium and and grams of oxygen. So the first thing we want to do is, and this is after we figure out the masses of each element, is we need to figure out the moles. Now remember that the empirical formula is the simplest whole number mole ratio. So the obvious thing to do is convert grams to moles. Now the way we do that is we take the molar mass of radium which is 226.03 and the molar mass of oxygen and we divide those into the masses we just determined. So for radium we take 1.64 divided by the molar mass we end up with 0 0.00726 moles. For oxygen we do that we take 0.115 divided by 16 and we get 0 0.00719. Now here's where the next step comes in. Okay. First step, we figure out the mass of the elements. Second step, we figure out the moles. Third step, figure out the ratio. So to do the ratio, what we have to do is we have to divide by the smallest value. In this particular example, we're going to divide each of these by 0 0.00719. Because remember, we want a whole number. So you're going to divide by the smallest to get that whole number. Now, in this particular example, you're going to get one for this one, and then you will end up with, well, I think it's one. Uh, 1.0097 to 1.01. That's close enough to one. So when, when we write the formula, we're going to have RA1 and O1, which is this basically RaO. Alright, so that's the so this is the empirical formula. So this is an ionic compound, and typically ionic compounds are written in their empirical formulas. Now, if we're dealing with a covalent compound, something we'll be dealing with something different. But 
In this example, the inverted formula is RAO, so you have one radium and one oxygen. So we also can determine the empirical formulas by using percent composition data. So percentages are out of 100, so we are going to make the assumption that we have a 100 gram sample. What that does is, is it creates a much more difficult problem and creates it into a much easier problem to solve. So here we have carbon and hydrogen, and we have 92.2% carbon, 7.83% hydrogen. The, that percentage is now going to be converted into a mass. Now, we assume that it's out of 100, and that assumption allows us to now say we have 92.2 grams of carbon and 7.83 grams of hydrogen. Now, like the previous problem, first thing to do is figure out how many grams of each element you have present. The second thing we're going to do is convert grams into moles. Here we are, we have the molar mass of carbon and hydrogen, and we solve for the moles of each of those atoms. Now, the next step is going to be dividing by the smallest number. In this particular case, it's 7.68. We divide each of those by 7.68, and what we end up getting is a value of 1 and 1.01. Just like before, the 1.01 is close enough to where it's a whole number, it's going to be 1. Now, what would happen if we had a compound where we had carbon was 1, and then hydrogen was 1.5. So this is a situation where now you you can't go one way or another because it's really not the best way to do it. So what we typically do here is we find a number to multiply so that way we get both numbers to being whole. So in this example we would multiply by 2 because 1.5 times 2 is going to give me 3 which is a whole number. So whatever you do to the hydrogen you also have to do it to the carbon so in this example, we would have C2H3 for your empirical formula. That is if that's what we actually calculate. But in this example, we didn't have that problem. This is just a what if. So, so we, we're not going to use that. So this here is your example for the, the empirical formula for this compound. Now the empirical formula for benzene is CH. So this represents that you have one carbon and one hydrogen atom in the empirical formula, but that does not give you the molecular formula. How do we figure out the molecular formula? What we do is we figure out whatever multiple the, 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 the molecular formula and the empirical formula are from each other. Now, benzene, now this would be information provided to you just so you know, okay? Benzene has a molar mass of 78 grams per mole. We need to figure out what N is so that way we know how, how many of the carbons and hydrogens are going to be found in the molecular formula. What we do know is we do know the empirical formula's molar mass. We can find, so it's, it, so carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, so that would be 13 grams per mole. Now to figure out N, we're going to take the 78, and then we're going to divide by 13, we'll end up with 6 here. So what we do is we take the, the carbon-hydrogen, and we have the 6 and we distribute that throughout the parentheses so you end up with C6H6. So again, uh, in order for us to figure out what N is and how many multiples we're going to multiply by, what we need to do is we need to figure out based off the molar mass of the compound and using the molar mass of the empirical formula. So that's where 78 comes from. That was given to you and the 13 was to determine the molar mass of the empirical formula, CH. So we figure out that that value gives you 6, so that division gives you 6, and we distribute it through the parentheses so you end up with a molecular formula of C6H6. So when we go back, we look at the steps for the empirical formulas, how to determine that. First thing is you've got to figure out your grams, okay? So we, got, we have to determine grams. The second step is then to convert grams into moles where we divide by the molar mass. Third thing is is divide by smallest number so that way you develop your ratio. All right, The whole point of that is figuring out the ratio. Remember you divide by the smallest so that way you end up with a whole number. And the fourth thing to do is then write 
the empirical formula. So now we have a, an example problem here. Now this example problem is an application of what we just learned. So they give you a compound and they give you the percent carbon, hydrogen, and arsenic by mass. So what they want you to do in part A is to determine the empirical formula. And then in part B they give you the molar mass of the compound and they want you to write the molecular formula. So let's do that. So to figure out the empirical formula what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go through figure out the masses and then the moles of each of these components. Now and to, to do this what we need is to take the percentages and divide them out by the molar mass. Remember that we're that we're focusing on it, the fact that they're out of a hundred so for carbon you're going to have 22.90 grams for hydrogen you're going to have 5.76 grams and then arsenic is going to have 71.46 grams so we're going to divide them out by the molar masses so keeping it simple so it's 12 grams per mole this is one gram per mole and then arsenic is seventy five grams per mole so obviously this is going to be five point seven six moles for hydrogen for carbon it's going to be one point nine one moles for arsenic it's going to be basically one so zero point nine five now remember we're going to divide by the smallest number here because we have to figure out the ratio divide everything by 0 0.95 6 this is 2 now these are close enough to the whole numbers where I just kept them like this. So the empirical formula is C2H6AS. So that's part A. Now part B says the molar mass of, of the compound is 210 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula? So just like before, we have the empirical formula. What we need to do is figure out molar mass of it. So we're going to have 12 times 2 plus 6 times 1 plus 75 that gives me 105 grams per mole now n is equal to 210 because that's what they give you divided by 105 which is 2 so we are going to take the empirical formula and we're going to multiply it by 2 so we're going to, and basically we're going to take put this in parentheses this is 2 we're going to distribute it through the parentheses so you end up with C4H12AS2 and so that's it that's all you have to do for that part <clears throat> so I hope this uh, this little short problem helps you in understanding the basic steps and foundations towards figuring out the empirical formula do remember that when you have fractions, you need to figure out a common multiplier so that way you can get to a whole number. Those situations are pretty rare, but they, you do come across them. So just keep in back of your head that you cannot round unless it's like right there. Like the, the this was uh, for the hydrogen, it was 6.06. .06. That's 6. Now, if it was 6.33, no, I cannot round that to six I have to multiply by three to get it to the nearest whole number and whatever you multiply that by you have to do it for the other elements that are present so not what we had to do here these all came out in nice whole, rounded whole numbers perfect so again more practice to do the better you're going to get it thanks for watching